Now I'd like to welcome Brittany Arneson. She's a senior at UNM. She's majoring in sociology and doing a dual minors in peace studies and psychology. She is the outreach and education coordinator for the Get Equal New Mexico, a nonprofit empowering the LGBTQ community to take action and demand full legal and social equality. She is the president and co-owner of Duke City Darlings, a nonprofit charity group, and the executor a director for the FUK Cancer Center for the Eradication of Female Reproductive Cancers. She is also the president of the UNM Student Dharma Association. Brittany has been part of the Unoccupy movement since day one. And she is going to, her, the title of her talk is Evolution and Agenda of the Unoccupy Albuquerque Movement. Excuse me, we're going to hold off on questions just a little bit more because we're running behind on time. But I'll be happy to answer as many as you want. <laughs> I'm actually going to be really short and simple. I'm used to having a microphone in my hand, but usually it's a blow horn. So please bear with me. I'm not used to having this. So um, basically, I've been here since I've been with the Occupy Unoccupy movement since day one here in Albuquerque. Um, I'm not originally from here, but I saw a lot of inequality when I was in Texas growing up, and I've always been kind of pushed forward to help my community. So when I received a scholarship to come to New Mexico to go to UNM, I was really excited to start a new life here. Um, and I've been here for about four years now. And I soon found out that even though I have, you know, I'm working on my college degree, I wasn't guaranteed a job right when I got out. So um, I quickly joined the Unoccupy movement here. It really started with the internet if you think about it. Because at that time, there was do they were doing media blackouts and we were having trouble trying to find any information on what was happening in New York. Um, the first video I saw actually was police brutality in New York and it quickly kind of um, sparked an interest for me. Um, and then I started looking into the Occupy Together website and that's kind of where me and my community um, and my neighborhood started looking more into it. Um, and shortly after that, Carro here in New Mexico, she started a Facebook event page that was like, come occupy Albuquerque. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, how awesome. It's starting here, right? There was like 400 people that said they were coming in a couple of days. So she soon figured out that she needed to start a meeting plan. And everybody met up and we decided to figure out what we were going to do. So we did a march on October 1st um, that I know a lot of you are at. And we had so many people that we blocked Central. Um, all the way from Central and University to Central and San Mateo. Um, and at that time, the police were being very helpful with us. They were guiding us um, and sometimes taking our audience away from us. But um, nonetheless, they were pretty kind at that time. Um, and then we decided to take camp that night. And we were trying to figure out, well, where, where could we go? you know, where would be a good place to occupy in New Mexico? So of course, the university, right? I mean, there's educated people here. We have a very educated staff that work here. Um, lots of students that would want to be involved in the movement. So we took place at Camp Coyote over there on um, Central and University. And I mean, immediately we set up medical areas, art areas, information areas, food areas. Um, we figured out where people were sleeping. We figured out that we wanted to do 6 p.m. general assemblies every night um, and it really started very fast um, we had hundreds of people coming to the camp and assisting us with anything that we needed whether it be food or you know sunblock it's needed for me okay very much needed <laughs> so I mean we have so many people that were assisting us and so many great teachers that stopped by and just asked us you know what we were doing and we were able to reach out to the students here and then shortly um, after we started occupying here at the university, we set up a meeting with UNM police uh, to talk to them about safety precautions and what we needed to do to make sure that we were obeying all of the laws on Camp Coyote. Um, and they were A-OK -okay with us staying at first and, you know, well, right there with us because, you know, damn well they're not getting paid enough for what they do, let's be honest here. Um, so. We had support from UNM, right, police, so we were really excited about that. Well, that changed pretty shortly because we 
started getting trouble from Schmidley with our permits and saying that we weren't obeying the laws there when we clearly stated on our you know board that we were trying to obey all the laws and you know the major problem that Schmidley said that we were facing was um, the homeless population which when we talked to individuals who have been here in New Mexico for very long said they've always been there <laughs> always I mean they're not up in your face right now um, and then you know the the permit was given back to us well we had to work with it with the ACLU um, because they wanted to give us hours that were not wanted so eventually we came to the conclusion of 5 to 10 right so that's what we've been working with right now now you know with the actual movement here in Wall like at Wall Street they're occupying 24 hours a day and we want to do that as well we want to show complete solidarity with this movement so we're currently working on that we're having a little get together on 11 11 at Robinson Park it's going to be a celebration so I really encourage you all to just come out and take place and want have a participation in one of our general assemblies come out and meet the people I mean the best part about this movement is the fact that there's so many people from different walks of life my eyes have been completely open to people from different political parties and people that are four times my age and people that are you know half my age and and um, being able to share a space with the homeless population and people of different religions and races, sexual orientations. It's just been really amazing and eye-opening to me and very educating. That's something that you will never learn at this university is how to be around people and to truly experience other people and the way that they, the, the place they came from. So yeah, I'm, I mean, that's pretty much kind of where we're at right now. So do we have any questions? I'll be happy to answer anything you guys want to ask me. Any questions? Where is Robertson, Robertson Park? Where is that? You know, I don't know, actually. Eighth and Central. There we go. Central and Eighth. For some reason, it's been six. Yeah, so it'll be Central and Eighth. Where the roundabout is. Where the roundabout is. Where the farmer's market is. Yeah, exactly. 11 o'clock. To, um, on Friday, it's going to start on the 11th. It'll start at 11 a.m. Actually, we're going to we have our we have it set up from 11 to 11. Actually, so feel free to step by any time. But we will be doing our general assembly at six. Yeah, there'll be bands and food and lots of fun. Yes, sir. You know, you have a meeting room signed out in the A meeting room. I don't, but from I can speak until to that. Free. Yeah, so we'll have somebody speaking on that. Yes, sir. When you were taken in by the police, did you spend overnight there? How were you treated by the police in the <laughs> detention? Repeat the question. <laughs> um, so this um, this man is asking me if um, how I was treated by the police um, and the staff when I was arrested overnight. Um, the police were fine, other than the people who went limp. They treated them very harshly, slamming their face into concrete, slamming them into cars, so on and so forth. Now, the staff at MDC was a whole nother story. They were like four times the, as violent as the police were, um, cussing at us, our stuff was stolen, um, ridiculous searches because they said stuff went stolen, stolen saying that we were doing gang signs. Um, they treated us much more harshly than um, they treated the actual inmates that were in there for God knows what. Um, consistently telling us to wipe our smiles off of our face. Um, I mean, anything you can think of that would have went bad, it happened there. A man had diabetes and was continuously asking them for help because his blood sugar was dropping. They refused to give him help until several hours later. I'm talking four or five. At that point, when I watched him walk out of the paddy wagon, he was unable to walk. Um, our zip ties were left on for hours. We were slammed into stuff. The man who drove us to MDC kept on break checking us and, um, you know, not obeying traffic laws. It was, I mean, it was pretty intense. Now, I'm not going to say that it wasn't fun, okay, because it was fun because I got to talk to you about, I, I would say, 25 other women in the, from, you know, all different age groups, and we got to sit there and talk for 11 hours. So I was picked up at 11, I was released at 10 o'clock in the morning, and I was one of the first ones to leave. Yes, sir.